You're listening to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, Episode 81, How Blockchain-Based Everpedia is Disrupting the Wiki Model. Let's do it. So what's up, Liberty Nation? Welcome back to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash Oro, and today we're going to talk about decentralization on the EOS blockchain. We've got Mahmoud Mohagdam from Everpedia. He graduated Yale in 2004, and he's currently the co-founder of Everpedia and the chief community officer. You know, I'm really excited about Everpedia. They're a competitor to Wikipedia, but they're basically bringing Wikipedia on the blockchain and putting that using um, EOS, which is, as everyone that knows and listens to this podcast, EOS is probably my favorite blockchain project at the moment. We're recording this on May the 15th, and we've got about two weeks, about three weeks before the EOS mainnet launch. So, Mahmoud, thank you very much for coming on Liberty Entrepreneurs. Yeah, Ash, thanks for having me. Uh, it was really fun yesterday in preparation for this. Uh, getting the wiki page started for the podcast and for you and for your other companies. Yeah. So just let's start right there. Like, you know, I've tried to create myself a Wikipedia page um, and I guess I'm not a very noteworthy person or influencer, although I think I'm moving up the ranks, but it doesn't, I've had a lot of difficulties trying to create a Wikipedia page. What, what do you mean that you created a Wikipedia page for? So we are, we are blood brothers because that's the same issue I had. I think like we need to make a secret society of everyone who had a Wikipedia page, but it got deleted. Uh, but we call Everpedia pages wiki pages too, because it's still a wiki. Like wiki just means any community knowledge project. Like, you know, Genius is a wiki or Quora. So your wiki page is your Everpedia page. It's like, okay. it's really... We want people to think of it as it's the same exact thing as having a Wikipedia page. Right. All right. So before we get into Everpedia and the difference between Wikipedia, give us a little bit of background of who you are and, and what, what you've built previously and how you networked with the, the team with Everpedia and, and came as a co-founder to you know, build this blockchain-based Wikipedia. So I got into this uh, after leaving my first company, Genius. And Genius is basically the Wikipedia for lyrics. Uh, and that is what inspired Sam and Teddy, who are the president and CEO, to build the MVP of Everpedia. The original idea behind Everpedia was like, why is there this very, very slick, very modern wiki for lyrics? But then the wiki for everything, Wikipedia, is very clunky and from, it's from 2001. So they wanted to build the genius version of Wikipedia. And that we were doing that actually for two years. We're one of the blockchain projects that is unique in that we'd already built a huge site, one of the top 1,000 sites in the U.S., getting a lot of traffic uh, for people who were kind of in my situation, people who people are searching for their Wikipedia page, but either they're not allowed to have a Wikipedia page or no one has thought to make one, or basically the bureaucracy of Wikipedia has kept them from, from having one. So that's what we were doing. And then we, we, we ta started talking to the right investors and we were always into blockchain stuff. So then the blockchain, if you want to call it a pivot or if you want to call it just a really big additional project we're taking on, uh, it's obviously revolutionary. I mean, that's what got the founder of Wikipedia to join us. And yeah. that's what's happening next month. You know, it hasn't, it hasn't happened yet, but, uh, next month our token is going to launch and we think that could be transformative for the site. And I've got so much I want to talk to you guys about, uh, you know, we'll definitely get into the token dynamics because I think that's one thing that specifically got me interested in Everpedia project. But you, you mentioned that you've got the co-founder of Wikipedia interested in the Everpedia project. And I believe that's Larry Sanger. Yeah, yeah. We've been talking to Larry for years. Like he actually was one of the first people we pitched Everpedia to. And he was into it. He's been a critic of Wikipedia. You know, he criticizes his own baby. He's 
He's a very philosophical dude. Uh, and what made him decide to join us was when we told him that we're going to do a token and put it on the blockchain. And he said this was kind of like the vision they had for Wikipedia. Like with Wikipedia, they couldn't decide whether it should be a for-profit or a non-profit. Right. And it ended up being a non-profit. But with decentralization, one way to think of it is that it's neither for-profit or non Like, you know, we're a for-profit corporation, but we're going to operate through these tokens that are going to let the contributors own their content. Right. So that's kind of the vision he had for Wikipedia in 2001, but there was no blockchain back then. So it was not a practicable idea. Yeah. And, and just a little bit of background on Everpedia that I looked up is you, you have over 6 million articles already. Uh, it says no ads. Anyone can create an article or become an editor and there's no censorship. Of course, there's no censorship because you're moving towards a blockchain environment. Uh, you yeah, with no censorship, I think what they mean is more the thing about once we move on to EOS. Right, right, right. Because now you're still a centralized server base. You know, For now, server. we're on AWS. Yeah, we're running on Amazon servers, which like I think are in Washington State. Right. Um, and you started off with all of the wiki articles imported into Everpedia. Uh, how did that happen and why did you do that? Well, uh, the inspiration for that was Wikipedia, because Wikipedia started by importing all of Britannica. Oh, okay, right. So it doesn't really make sense to start from a blank slate. Like, they didn't start from a blank slate either. Mm. And then for us, it's even more important, because, uh, like I was telling you, originally, before the blockchain stuff, we thought of ourselves as an expansion pack to Wikipedia. So, like, I'm not allowed to have a Wikipedia page, but you go to my Everpedia page, and it says that I went to Yale University. And then you click on the Yale University, and it shows you the encyclopedia article about Yale University, like everything about the... the right, the it, it, would, it would link back over, like, an expansion pack where... So, it's for the rabbit holes. That's why we, ex right. that's why we imported Wikipedia originally. But then now, we're going to be putting Wikipedia on EOS which means 20 countries, including China and Iran, that censor Wikipedia are no longer going to be able to do that. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? You know, I've been talking about uh, blockchain-based social media. You know, I'm, I'm pretty active on Steam. And nice. I, I find that, you know, when, once I tell people that, hey, you can actually get paid to blog and post your social media updates on Steam, but it's also censorship free. There's no gatekeepers there. And that, that's one of the things that really catches people's attention now because of all the news that comes out about Facebook censoring or Facebook trying to sway people's votes or, you know, showing specific types of posts to people to, to run little social experiments on and hiding other content and where that's not possible on the blockchain because everything's open source. You know, do you, do you think this is one of the main advantages of Everpedia over Wikipedia is this no censorship because you're moving over to a blockchain? I think that's a huge part of it, but I think it's connected. Like, like you were saying with, with Steemit, I, I don't think the correct way to think of it on any of these blockchain platforms is getting paid. Cause like, you know, you go and post on Facebook and no one's paying you. Uh, I think the way to think of it is that the tokens are going to allow content creators to own their content. And that doesn't only mean for the monetary value of the content, for the monetary value of selling the tokens. It's also for how that content is governed and how it's stored. So that's, there are three modules to our token. And it's basically the, the value, like you're getting, you're getting value. You're also getting a vote. So the tokens are going to be the votes for the governance structure of the site. For example, like if we do a vote on if Infowars is, a, is an acceptable uh, source or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then the third one is actually hosting the article. So but, but by hosting it on your own token that's in your possession, China can no longer decide that uh, Chinese people aren't allowed to read it. Right. And, and I read somewhere, and correct me if I'm wrong, that whenever you want to edit an article on Everpedia, you basically put up a bounty of your IQ tokens, which is the name of the Everpedia token. Um, you, you would put up a bounty of IQ tokens to make your change, and then you would make your change. And if it's accepted by the community, 
then you would get your tokens back and a, and a, a percentage additional tokens maybe out of inflation or something because you're, you're being rewarded for logging the truth. And whereas if you don't, if you put some of your tokens up and the community's like, no, this is fake news or no, this is, this is non-factual, then you would lose those tokens. Is that the token mechanics? Yeah, there's a staking mechanism. You know, I don't fully understand this stuff because I'm not a technical guy, but the important thing that I can note on this is we're not only building this for Everpedia. We're trying to decide the rules for how the blockchain internet is going to work. And that means for the blockchain Wikipedia, which is Everpedia, but it's also for blockchain Reddit and blockchain YouTube and blockchain Facebook and Instagram and everything. Uh, so we're really trying to set it up like Steemit was basically the the best first pass. Like right. Steemit is the only blockchain uh, entity that people are using on the internet today. For social media. Then, yeah, but, but at all. I mean, it's the only one. It's the only one in the game. Uh, you know, over half of blockchain transactions are Steemit transactions. That's right. Yeah. So now the founder of Steemit, uh, Dan Larimer, is trying to build the ideal protocol that he wishes Steemit had been built on. And then he's going to do a better iteration. Like that's basically what we're helping him do. We're going to do a better iteration of Steemit. And Steemit was already on this path. Like they weren't only trying to do Reddit. There's also DTube, which is like part of the same network. And it's the YouTube replacement. So that's the plan. Like, you know, I think, I think blockchain is really about uh, building the entire internet uh, from scratch. And especially for consumer internet, that's what we're working on. And it's the most important, uh, in my opinion, it's the most important application of blockchain. It's basically like we've built this thing called the internet where, you know, millions and millions of people are building a lot of valuable content but Mark Zuckerberg owns all the content. Right. So we're going to make it so that everyone owns the content. Right, right. And it's accessible to everyone as well, which I think is just as important. It's like, yeah, you can own your content, but then anybody can, if they know where to get your content, anybody can go get your content. It can't be blocked from some of these nation states or, you know, try to suppress dissenting voices or something. Exactly. You know, I, yeah. that, well, that one is especially apropos to us because Wikipedia suffers so much censorship and like in china for example they have their own version of wikipedia mm. which like we've we we have sort of a or i guess had a nascent chinese everpedia community and they were just telling us how much the chinese uh rip off version sucks oh right i mean it's not going to be nearly as much truth as an open source model uh, you know i i think that everpedia since it's being built on EOS, which can support, you know, eventually um, out of the gate, single core, a couple thousand transactions per second. And then once they get multi-threaded, then hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. But th this is the type of speed and scale that you need to run something like, like Everpedia or a Wikipedia or a Facebook. So if you're working with Dan, and I I've been following Dan's work since, you know, BitShares and Steam and now, of course, EOS. I do think that this is the blockchain EOS that will be built to provide the scale and security and usability, right? Usability to scale up to a million, two million, three million, hundred million users potentially for a social media, text-based social media platform. But why did you guys choose EOS whenever it seems like Ethereum is the blockchain that everyone is, is talking about. It's the one that has, you know, the $70 billion market cap. Well, EOS is, is trying to build uh, what we're trying to build. EOS is specialized for, like you said, something with millions and millions of users. So we're just exactly the correct fit. And then some of the repercussions of that, uh, I guess the one that matters to us the most is that this is way more environmentally friendly. Like with Ethereum, we would just be burning electricity to mint our tokens. Whereas now that electricity is going to be used to power the de decentralized site. Hmm. So from an environmental perspective, this is going to use a lot less energy and that meant a lot to us. Right. And uh, that also means the censorship resistance and everything we talked about, like, like I was saying, Dan Larimer is the only guy who's built something with traction 
on blockchain. So if he's building the platform, we're going to use his platform. Like I've, I've always been a firm believer as an entrepreneur that all I care about is traction. Like if someone has the best idea and the best investors and the best developers, but no one's using their product, I'm not excited. Like neither one of my companies even raised significant capital until we already had uh, over a million users. Oh, wow. And how, so, many, how many users does Everpedia currently have? And I went to the site and I see that you're still, it looks like you're still in maybe a beta stage because it's, a, it's still an invite only for the community. But how many, how many users do you have? How many active users do you have? And when do you expect that to open up more to the public? Is that going to be after you move to EOS? I'm not sure we'll ever take it back from invite only because we, we really like, we, so we switched it to invite only originally thinking we don't want that many people signing up right now because we're about to change everything and put it on the blockchain and that's going to change all the rules. But what I kind of like as a community manager about invite only is if you're signing up to use my site, I want to talk to you, you know? So this way I kind of talk to everyone. I guess what's bad about it though is it's kind of discouraging to people. Like people think, they see if it's an invite and they think there's some kind of rigmarole involved. Uh, but I haven't had a totally negative experience. It's not hard. All you have to do is just give us our, your email and I, I kind of, I'm there to give you some pointers about where to tell people about what you're working on, the kind of stuff to work on. Like a lot of people just want to sign up to edit the Wikipedia import pages. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't really make sense right now because we still don't understand what the interplay of the site is going to be with Wikipedia. So right now, a uh, big part of my mission is to keep our community in expansion pack mode, like right. trying to build the accessories around existing uh, Wikipedia pages. You know, like there's a page for my old company, Genius, but there's no page. Not only do I not have a page, but the president and CEO of the company, my, my former co-founders don't have pages either. Mm -hmm. So they all have Everpedia pages and their pages are getting a ton of traffic too because everyone's Google searching their Wikipedia page and their, their Everpedia is what wins the search. Right, but because they don't have a Wikipedia page? Yeah, we just basically a, a ton of our traffic, a, a big chunk of our traffic is from people Google searching the word wiki. Oh, right. Because people are just always... Wiki. Yeah, people are always looking for Wikipedia pages that don't exist. Right. So it's kind of like how, you know, Genius, my first company, tapped into the word lyrics. Like, lyrics is one of the most Googled words. Mm. So Everpedia is just, or the original, you know, pre-blockchain idea was just, let's win the Google search for Wiki. Because mm -hmm. the sites that win it right now uh, for stuff that Wikipedia doesn't win, a lot of them aren't even Wikis. They're just like these crappy content farm sites like you know like famousbirthdays.com mm -hmm. or you know for startups you have crunchbase which is like this this shitty fake wiki but then you know you search any startups wiki and crunchbase wins so we think we can defeat all of those you know that's just for breakfast we can eat, defeat all of these fake wiki sites yeah and since you have a token that's going to be used it creates an economy around Everpedia. And I think that's going to attract a lot more attention to, to Everpedia as opposed to Wikipedia, for instance. I mean, you know, Steam is only two years old and it's shot up to top 2,000 most popular websites in the world. I think at one point it was in the top 1,000 po most popular, most visited websites in the world as, as far as Alexa rankings go. Uh, it, it's just this incentivization model that, non-blockchain companies can't really do they can't really offer because i know you guys wanted to offer a uh like a point system for people who were editing content on on the everpedia page you know pre going to blockchain but i, I mean just like points on reddit or points on whatever name your favorite social media site nobody really cares about points because you know they're not fungible they're not transferable you can't i mean what do you do with them you know, well, I still think people care. That's, that's not true because like Wikipedia doesn't have points and that's a big, big problem. Hmm. Like, so our, our points are called IQ, which is also what the points were called on my uh, previous site, Genius. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and people definitely care a lot. I think especially calling it IQ, I think is a great name because it's like yeah. straight up, the more IQ you have, you right. make it smarter. Yeah. And I think it kind of helps. It's going to help with the, the metaphor of the token along. Cause it's like, Hey, remember the IQ that used to be on the site? Well, now it's like a real thing. Right. And there's, there are hundreds of thousands of people who hold EOS who are going to become IQ holders overnight. So we think that could just be like massive, massive for the community. That's, that's another reason why we're so excited about doing stuff that through the airdrop. Yeah, so I know you guys made a big announcement. I can't remember what conference it was at, but you, you got on stage and said, you know, you're not going to be able to buy our IQ tokens. We're going to airdrop all of them on the EOS community. How did you decide to airdrop all of your tokens instead of having a traditional ICO? And, you know, how do you think it's going to grow your community? What does this mean for Everpedia to just quickly disperse your, distribute your tokens and kind of have an instant community of EOS token holders and supporters. Well, you know, EOS basically gave us $30 million. So it's kind of the pooled money of EOS holders, if you think about it. So it's just a different way to do uh, investing and, and capitalism. One way to think of it is it's kind of like EOS is a stock exchange, right? So, uh, what, when you buy EOS, you're buying a piece of the stock exchange, but then if they start doing these airdrops the way that they're doing with Everpedia with other companies as well, you're also getting a piece of the companies that IPO on the exchange. Right. Yeah. So I think it's really cool. The biggest appeal to us is we're a community site and we're going to have hundreds of thousands of people overnight who have our tokens, so. Yeah, and, and will each of the, so let's say you have all these token holders, you know, will, um, will any of those token holders be able to come and become uh, authors and editors on Everpedia? Of you know? course, yeah, they have, I mean, if you think with the staking stuff, they even have a bit of an advantage. Yeah, I guess. Although I'm their gonna... content still has to be good. Like, you know, there's a limit to the power of tokens, obviously. Yeah, I guess, I guess I'm confused a little bit because previously you said that maybe the invite only system is going to remain around indefinitely, but then I feel like that kind of contradicts the, the statement on the website that says anyone can, you know, edit or create an article. Yeah, well, no, the invite, it's not like we, it's not like you have to apply. The invite is kind of just to make sure you're a real person and also to make sure there's someone there to like answer your questions and stuff, but anyone can join us especially anyone who holds the tokens, we're going to really be going out of our way to make sure that they don't, you know, they don't screw up and they're able to figure out how to contribute the valuable stuff. Do you feel like there's a threat or a risk that that could centralize the editors and make it kind of similar, if not the same as Wikipedia right now? Well, I mean, look at all of crypto with with decentralization comes centralization you know what i mean like you can't have a revolution overnight there still are these issues like you know very few people own a lot of tokens and things like that but it's it's steps towards progress i think the internet made the world much more egalitarian you know there's still class there's still power power hierarchies but the internet has has made the world i think a better place that's why i work on it and I think crypto is going to be the next coming of the internet. And it's just going to make it a lot more level playing field. Right. And a lot more open and, and fair. I, I completely agree with you. Uh, do you but over time, Everpedia will definitely become more and more like, you know, we're going to, right now it's kind of a free for all, just like Wikipedia was when it started. But we're going to have to come up with more rules. Like right now we don't have that many rules, but then once, a lot of people hold the tokens and we start having votes on stuff. We're going to have more and more rules. Sure. Do you think that Everpedia is going to be a good entry point for non-techie people to get into crypto kind of like steam? Totally. I think it's better because, uh, you know, with, with crypto Reddit, it's a great use case, but I think when you're going to have tokens, you want to try to build timeless content. That's the main difference, right? Is that Steam is trying to build content that's 
good for today, whereas we're trying to build content that's going to be good forever. Right. Yeah, just me using Steam, I can tell that I can tell that people aren't um, incentivized to write high quality content since the token, since the payout period, which is why a lot, if not most people come over to Steam because they believe that they can get paid for the content that they're already creating online. Since there's only a seven day payout window on Steam, I've noticed that the quality on Steam isn't as let's say high quality as it could be because you know your 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 blog post only has a very small window that people can show you the value that they see in your post and then after seven days the seven day period it closes up it gets sent to the blockchain for all time and then there's no more potential payout there how, how do you see someone let's say you know i heard a previous interview you said that there's possibilities for high school and college kids to get experience and maybe even you know make some of these tokens for being in the community, creating these pages, editing these pages. What what's more of a long term idea that Everpedia could implement, or maybe you guys already are implementing this for people to to incentivize high quality posts rather than the short term outlook that I think kind of plagues Steam. Well, I think the nature of it is different, but, but the, real, the real comparison, it's kind of apples and oranges because we're trying to do crypto Wikipedia, whereas Steam is crypto Reddit. So I think what's really going to be interesting is to compare Steam to the EOS Reddit, mm. uh, which uh, Dan Larimer is also working on right now. And that's going to be the second iteration. Like They're basically just going to go through it and try to fix a lot of the problems. And I think working with the Everpedia team is going to be a big, big part of making the second iteration a lot stronger than the first one. And like, you know, the first one, it's plagued with problems. Everyone complains. The founder is not with it anymore. He's building a replacement. But what's their market cap? You know, it's still worth a lot of money and it gets a lot of traffic. So uh, I think like to, to paraphrase Winston Churchill about Steemit, like it's a really shitty s site, but it's the only crypto yeah. site that's not total shit you know what i mean yeah it, it, i mean and people are using it like you said you know anybody can go to blocktivity.info and see that more people are using the steam blockchain than almost always all other blockchains combined yeah. and you know and if you look at the top two competitors it's steam and bitshares which are both dan larimer's you know inventions delegated proof of stake blockchains and the combination of those two Steam and BitShares are typically about 70% of all the blockchain transactions in existence today. So you know, I think that once EOS is released and man, when you guys release Everpedia, that's going to be a big boon to the, the transaction throughput that EOS is going to see. And I think it's going to shoot it up to the top of that chart. When do you guys expect to launch the blockchain based Everpedia? We're going to be out two weeks after the Genesis. Mm. So uh, I think the Genesis is June 2nd. We're going to be two, two weeks after that. Oh, wow. Soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is an exciting time and it is a time where holding EOS is a smart, <laughs> smart move. Like when I first heard about Dan Larimer, uh, I was really drawn to him for a variety of reasons. One, because like I'm saying, traction matters to me so much and everything he builds gets a lot of traction. And then also it's just cool how he's like, he's a guy who really knows about code. He's got all these coders looking up to him, but he's got nothing to do with Silicon Valley. Like he's not At physically, all. he doesn't even set foot there. He's just on Virginia Tech's campus right. working from where he's comfortable. So. He really, I, my personality was really drawn to him. And it's really exciting that we're working so closely with him now. Yeah, and I love it that Dan only has a bachelor's degree in computer science. And guys like Charles Hoskinson of, of Cardano, and I think he was with Ethereum Classic and Ethereum. And you know, a lot of people don't know this, but Charles was the CEO of BitShares back in the day before him and Dan split ways. But, you know, th they make fun of Dan for only having a bachelor's degree in computer science. But it shows you that degrees are completely overrated and experience and, and, you know, entrepreneurial experience and proving that you can build a usable product is so much more significant and important 
than, uh, than a degree. Well, the guys who built my uh, companies were both philosophy majors. Yeah, there you go. So that's exactly. kind of an uncanny thing that they both have in common. But uh, I think wasn't I think Zuck was going to major in classics. So that's kind of <laughs> close to philosophy, but he didn't even finish. He dropped out after a year. Good for him. Uh, hey, speaking of college students, uh, in a previous interview, you mentioned that there's possibilities for high school and college students to work with Everpedia and build some experience and you know, work with the team and start getting in on, on what seems to still be the ground floor of Everpedia. Well, what, what did you mean by that? And what type of possibilities do you see for high school and college students to, to get this experience rather than just go on drawing on in more classroom classrooms? It's the best thing to do. I, anyone can be in our community uh, because of the tokens. That's the plan is to have a community of millions. But then if you're in school and you want to come at it with a pedagogic purpose, I'm willing to help you do that. We had a big uh, cohort last summer, which was a huge success. And right now I'm putting together the cohort for this summer. So it's not too late if anyone's hearing this to get in touch with me. And the first step is just to get you going on the site and start, start creating pages. You know, the first thing is to make your own page. Like everyone, you know, know thyself. You have to make your own wiki page to get it started. But then through creating content, you can learn a lot about marketing and business development and SEO and basically everything about startups. So that's kind of the, the road that we take the interns on is that the interns are creating content, but with, specific ends in mind they, they're pitching the pages to specific people like you know back in the day we were making pages for every investor in the world and showing them their wiki page but then now we raise money so maybe we don't do as many investors but we do a lot more reporters you know what i mean so sure. And, and do you, what type of positions do you see somebody being able to take like a high school or college student i mean do you are, are the pages that they create, are they credited as the author of that page? Or as of course, editor? yeah. There's an IQ leaderboard on every single page. So it shows you as the top IQ on any page. And can someone that edits or creates a page or keeps it factual and up to date, uh, are they paid out in IQ tokens or how does that work? You get IQ token, like literally the tokens that you hold are the tokens that have your content. Oh, okay. They're so really your just, tokens. You basically own your content. Any content you're creating, you own the tokens for. Okay, right. So somehow you guys have linked like, hey, I've used these tokens and staked them to create these types of these, uh, these posts or these articles, and now they're associated with me. So as long as I hold those tokens, that's kind of my Everpedia resume, if you will. Yeah, I mean, the big question is, how much is popularity of content going to be factored? Like one thing I'm, I don't know, but one thing I'm constantly begging the developers is I'm hoping that a page that gets a hundred times as much traffic gets at least 50 times as many tokens. You know what I mean? Like even if someone's doing like brilliant scientific treatises that no one's reading, I don't think that should get nearly as many tokens as something that people are reading that goes viral and people show that they care about by visiting the page. Yeah. I, I only care about if people are looking at stuff, like yeah. if people aren't looking at stuff, I'm not interested in your company. I'm not interested in your page. Right. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that if the tree falls in the woods, uh, it doesn't make a sound. Right. Yeah. It would be interesting. Like, I, I'm super, and maybe I'll need to talk to someone else on your team, but I'm as a, I fancy myself as a crypto economist. I'm really interested about the inflation mechanism of the IQ tokens and how, yeah. you're, and how you're using the inflation to incentivize certain types of action. You know, like, we haven't even talked about that, but yeah, like, so for now there's no ads on the site and it's like, how's this going to make money? But it could just be built into the token, basically making it, making the value different, uh, whether the tokens are earned or bought. Yeah. Something like that. I don't get it, but it's really cool, and Sam's really excited about it. So yeah, we'll have some. maybe we'll be able to run this without any ads ever. Yeah, well, I think you will be able to. I think you could support the site using inflation, 
uh, you, similar to how steam works, you know, I've given a lot of presentations on steam and, and how you can incentivize and build a community using voluntary and specific inflation. Um, yeah, put Sam in touch with me. This is, this is what I'm kind of obsessed about is like, how do we build and support and incentivize our community by, by intelligently using inflation and new token creation? Because what if somebody creates a page on Everpedia and it gets 3 million views, right? We want, we want content like that to be created because it continues to build exposure to our community and it brings eyes, right? And we want to reward the people that build those. I'm also personally not the biggest enemy of advertising. I think like anything else can be done well. Like I think I like the idea. One, one thing that bothers me about Wikipedia is that brands can't edit their page, even if it's with correct factual information. And like PR agents are always getting busted for like illegally doing edits for clients and right. there's a black market. It's really dirty. So that's not right. But then maybe what Facebook isn't doing is doing isn't right either. But maybe we can create a platform where the brands can communicate with uh, with their customers, you know, and, and it'll be because it's an encyclopedia, we can actually make it more factual and more legit. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter if they're giving us billions of dollars, the brand can't run away if they've got some huge scandal because it's going to be on their Everpedia page. Right, exactly. So maybe we can help them get their point across or, I've, I've always been into advertising. Like, I remember with uh, Genius, I was so excited about, like, getting brands to, like, annotate hip-hop lyrics. Right. Something like that. And, and now it's happening. So I'm not there anymore, but I'm seeing it happen. I think uh, advertising is just another form of content. So it can be done well. But then having these token mechanisms for the crypto heads is really exciting because – like I was saying, it, it makes a entity that it's hard to say is this for profit or non profit or collectively owned or right. Or like like de decentralized capitalism is just a new wave of capitalism that doesn't fit the, the prior molds. Yeah, and, and it's breaking a lot of the old ideas of how business is built. You know, just like Steam, they've never run any ads that I know of and they continue to have these new tokens created to pay out their their content creators and curators you know, that, that was one of the most interesting aspects of everpedia and why i reached out to you guys is because i i've often wanted to go and edit a wiki page and i know that back in the day i used to be you know i can't remember when wiki first came out but i edited maybe a couple dozen pages and it was easy, you know, anybody could literally jump in and start editing a page and now it's gotten locked down, but to edit a page and reward the people who are continuing to add facts, add truth and keep content up to date by a token model that incentivizes that I found to be, to be really rewarding, you know, no pun intended there, but I, I just find it really fascinating how we're able to use these tokens to incentivize in this case, truth telling yeah and hopefully i mean i don't think people will be thinking of it as a reward i think they'll hopefully be thinking of it as just like you own the content that you're creating yeah so it's not like anyone's giving you a reward for a job well done you know that still makes it sound kind of like you're an employee and you have a boss or something mm. it's more just that the the blockchain allows all of us to create content on this big platform just like we do on Facebook and Twitter, but then it allows all of us to own our own content mm -hmm. instead of Mark Zuckerberg owning all of the content. Right. Since, since all of these articles are going to be placed in a blockchain and typically blockchains are immutable, so you can't go back and change old content. Whenever somebody makes a change and it gets accepted by the community, will it basically just create a new instance of that article and the old article will, will point to the new one? You know, I ask because sometimes I've found factual errors and mistakes in old steam posts that I wrote and I want to go back and change them because maybe they're a little bit embarrassing and I can't go, I can't go change that old article. You no, know, yeah, it's, it's a bit tricky. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen, but they are constantly telling the developers are telling us that with blockchain, certain things are going to seem a bit more archaic, right? Yeah. Uh, but that's the price you pay, but they're working really hard. Like basically what our team, which is the top guys in the entire world 
are working on doing is to make that experience uh, as painless as possible. Mm. Well, it's, it's super exciting. I'm a huge supporter of blockchains that are created specifically for content, which is, you know, not what EOS is doing specifically, but what you guys are you building on top of EOS to implement. I, I see, you know, when I look around and, and see what, what industries is blockchain going to disrupt first, the financial industry is very obvious, finance and money, but social media and content, I think, is another big one that's just ripe for innovation and disruption. And even with all the problems of Steam and Steam it and the, the, the way that the tokens were initially distributed and the whale issue and the bot issue and with all of these problems that it has, it's still super popular and gaining you know, new users every day. And I think it's just because it's in such a right space and the ever, you guys and the Everpedia team. Well, they were the friendster. Steemit is the friendster. <laughs> and we're building Facebook right now. Uh, it's going to be And so what we're doing, it's like, so on uh, the latest episode of Silicon Valley was kind of about Everpedia. So they basically, uh, they, they basically copied the story of Everpedia. But instead of making it that we're building Wikipedia, they've made it like we're building EOS. Like we're trying to build a new internet. Right. Uh, and then that's actually not, they kind of actually nailed it right on the head. Because like I was telling you, we're not only building Wikipedia. The protocols that we're building for the Wikipedia are going to be used to rebuild everything on the whole internet. So we're really working hand in hand with EOS to do the EOS mission. I mean, I, I still haven't even watched, I don't, I don't watch TV, so I still haven't seen it, but it might be worth checking out the latest episode of Silicon Valley. Cause like people have been telling me it's like crazy. Like they really did their research and like, for example, they have the company raise uh, $30 million to build right. EOS, which is like exactly how much we raised. Yeah. I, so they I gave us some shout outs. I haven't seen the latest episode. I've only, I think I've only seen like this season, but I, I found it very funny that there's a, a parody account on Twitter called Pied Piper coin where it has no affiliation to Silicon Valley or HBO, but they must be Dan Larimer fans because they're trolling all of these other like Ethereum and stuff like that. And they just released their coin Pied Piper coin. And, uh, you know, it, it's a really funny account on Twitter. It's a parody account. If, if you're on Twitter, you know, I, I recommend you follow at Pied Piper coin, which is, which is the coin's name in Silicon Valley that I think recently they just got 51% attacked in the, in the show. But, like I said, I haven't seen the episode yet. I don't watch a lot of TV either. Yeah, I have to watch it because, like, I, I'll never watch TV. But if someone makes a TV show about my company, then I'll watch it. <laughs> oh, well, Mark Buda, I really appreciate you coming on the Liberty Entrepreneurs podcast. If anyone in my audience and any high schoolers or college students specifically want to reach out to you and get involved, how should they do that? I am an easy man to get in touch with. Uh, hit me on, I mean, my favorite is Facebook, but I know with crypto people, that's not so popular anymore, but I'm on Telegram, I'm on Twitter, everywhere. Just, just message me on social media. And, and, and what, and what, what's us. your, ha what's your handle on Twitter? It's my full name. Okay. We'll leave that in the show notes and I recommend everyone follow the, uh, the at Everpedia account on Twitter as well. Uh, you know, it's, we're only a couple weeks away from the EOS mainnet launch, and then we're only a couple weeks more away from Everpedia launching on EOS, which is going to be one of the first applications built on EOS, and I think it's going to be one of the largest for quite some time now. If you look at the numbers and what Steam has been able to do, they're very impressive, and I think Everpedia could potentially eclipse that quickly. So everyone stay tuned. Get out Steam Steam. <laughs> yeah, they've got a lot of work to do. But the good news is that there's a lot of competition coming for blockchain-based social media and just blockchain-based content sites in general, which is going to put some needed fire under the Steam and Steam It team. And hopefully all this competition is going to rebuild the, 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 the current centralized social media networks into a decentralized media network that is open source, censorship free, and it rewards community members. So my Buddha, I really appreciate you coming on the show. 
uh, anything you, you'd like to leave the audience with or that we didn't cover? Well, it's really cool that you're giving the shout out to have people join us. It's really for anyone who wants to get into startups or tech or entrepreneurship, this is the best thing you can do is work with me this summer. And you think everyone would be rushing, but there aren't that many who are, who are brave. So yeah, people, join me. Pe people tend to need to see a working product before they, they get excited about something. A lot of people for, for whatever reasons have a difficult time seeing further into the future and seeing the vision. But I definitely see the vision that you guys are trying to build and, you know, I hope that people take you up on your offer to bring them in and, and get them. Networking. At the very least, you got like, you know, I just started your wiki page, but everyone's <laughs> got to make their wiki page because someday maybe your great, great, great grandchildren will be reading your wiki page and they'll get to know everything about you. And like, I wish I had something like that about my ancestors, you know, right. like, what if about like my grandpa's grandpa, I had a wiki page with pictures and videos and everything about his life. I would, I would do anything for that. Yeah, for sure. And now that it's in the blockchain, we have a high probability of that stuff being around in 100 or 200 years because it can't just be taken offline, which is the great thing about it. Um, so thanks again for coming on Liberty Entrepreneurs. I, I really wish you guys the best. I'll be following you very, very closely. I know that you guys are doing the, the token drop on uh, early June after, after the EOS snapshot and the mainnet goes live. So do people still have time if they want to be an IQ token holder and be part of that community to buy yeah. EOS tokens? And yeah, you buy EOS and you register. Cool. You know, I found the easiest way to register tokens is within the exodus.io wallet. I have no affiliation with them. I have no affiliation with Block One or EOS in general. I'm just a passionate community member and loving what they're doing and loving whatever he is doing. So you know, this has been the Liberty Entrepreneurs podcast. I'm Ash. Until next time, keep building freedom.